Hello and welcome back to a new video about multivariable calculus. Now, in today's part 7, we will continue talking about properties of totally differentiable functions. For example, we will discuss that this kind of differentiation is also a linear operation as in the one-dimensional case. And more importantly, we will prove the so-called chain rule. However, before we start, as always, I want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. There you should know that this support really gives me the motivation and the possibility to work on more videos about mathematics. Okay, then I would say, let's immediately start with the sum rule and the factor rule for the total derivative. Now, in order to describe these two rules, we have to consider two functions, f and g, that are totally differentiable at one point. And there, both functions should have n variables as the input and the vector with m components as the output. And as always, we just fix a point x tilde in the domain and say that both functions are totally differentiable there. And of course, you already know, instead of Rn, we could choose an open subset of Rn as the domain. However, here I want to keep it simple, because the generalization is straightforward. Okay, so here you see, we have two functions, and we can form without a problem the sum of both functions. Which is, obviously, again, a function from Rn to Rm. And there it might not surprise you that the result is that this new function is also totally differentiable at the given point x tilde. And moreover, we also know how the total derivative looks like. So you know it's denoted by d of f plus g at the given point x tilde. So here, please recall, this whole thing here denotes a whole linear map from Rn into Rm. And now the result here is that this linear map can be formed from two other linear maps. Namely, we need the total derivative of f at the point x tilde and the total derivative of g at x tilde. And the sum of both gives us the total derivative of f plus g. And of course, if you want, you can also formulate this with the Jacobian matrices. So you would say the Jacobian matrix of f plus g at the point x tilde is the sum of the Jacobian matrix of f with the Jacobian matrix of g. So in short, what you can remember here is, for the differentiation, we can pull out the addition sign. And of course you know this is one part of something we call linear. And the other part is simply that we also can pull out scalars. So in our case, this would be a scalar lambda from R. And as always, by having such a factor, we can define a new map lambda times f. So this is, as before, a well-defined map from Rn into Rm. And in the same way, we get the result that this new function is also totally differentiable at the given point x tilde. So the only question is, how does the derivative look like? And now this might not surprise you, this new linear map can be described by scaling the old linear map. In other words, you can pull out the scalar. And of course, in the same way as before, if you prefer it, you can write it with the Jacobian matrices. Okay, so in summary, you see, the first one here is the sum rule, and the second one is the factor rule, you might already know from the one-dimensional case. Or in other words, these two rules don't change when we go from calculus to multivariable calculus. And indeed, I can tell you, also the proof works exactly the same. Therefore, I think it will be more interesting to look at the generalization of another rule, the popular chain rule. This one is always important when you look at the composition of two functions. This means you start with one set on the left, and then we use a map g that goes from this set into another set. And then from this middle set we have another map f that goes into a third set. And then the resulting map is the composition of f after g. And usually we just write this with this circle. Okay, now maybe we first should recall what the chain rule says when we have functions from r into r. 
So the question is, what is the derivative of f after g? And maybe the point we fix here, we also call x tilde. Of course, here important to note is, it lies on the left hand side. Okay, now the chain rule says you can calculate this derivative using the other derivatives of f and g. Of course, assuming both exist at the given point. Okay, now the chain rule says simply take the derivative of f at the point g x tilde and multiply it with the derivative of g at the point x tilde. So it's just a multiplication of two derivatives. Okay, so this is the standard chain rule you should know from my real analysis course. However, now we will spice things up. This means the sets we consider here in the picture could lie in higher dimensional spaces. And indeed, the dimension could be different in every step. So simply put, we have Rk, Rn and Rm. So you see, now this is very general. We have a function g that starts with k variables, maps it into Rn and then comes f with n variables and maps this into Rm. Okay, and now the assumption we need is that g is totally differentiable at the point x tilde and that f is totally differentiable at the point g of x tilde. So this simply means our total derivatives exist at the given points. And then the question is, can we say something about the total derivative of f after g? And of course, we can only say something for the given point x tilde. Okay, and now it might not surprise you that we have a combination of df and dg. Okay, but we already know it can't be a normal multiplication because here we consider abstract linear maps. However, you know, as before, we don't have a problem composing both maps. And indeed, this is what happens here. We have the derivatives at the given points and then we compose them. So what you should see is that this is indeed a generalization from this fact there. And of course, as before, we can also formulate these with Jacobian matrices. So the Jacobian matrix of f after g at the point x tilde is given by the Jacobian matrix of f at the point g of x tilde times, as a matrix multiplication, the Jacobian matrix of g at the point x tilde. So this is what you might know from linear algebra, the composition of two linear maps translates into the matrix multiplication. Therefore, also here you see the connection to the one-dimensional chain rule. Okay, so in summary, here the result is, if we have two maps and they are both totally differentiable, then the composition of both maps is also totally differentiable. And we also know how we can calculate the derivative. Now, proving this nice chain rule here works actually the same as in the one-dimensional case. Therefore, I keep it simple here and just tell you about the idea of the proof. As ingredients, what we need is just the fact that g and f are totally differentiable. First, let's formulate the total differentiability for the function g. There we know we have this linear approximation here for the point x tilde. And in addition, we have this error function phi and maybe we call it phi of g. Okay, then let's do this in the same way for the function f at the point g of x tilde. There you see, we also have the linear approximation with the derivative df, but now evaluated at the point g of x tilde. And the error function we have here, we can call phi of f. Okay, and then you see, the only thing we have to do is to put both things together to get such a linear approximation for the function f after g. And indeed, this is not so hard, we can just write it down. So essentially, what we want is that we can write this in the same sense as we have written it for g, and then we can see the derivative as this linear map there. So in order to get this, let's use the definition of the composition. In other words, this here is f of g of x tilde plus h. And then you see here in the middle, we can just put in what we know about g. Okay, so we put that in and then you should see, we almost have the form we want for the function f here. 
So essentially, this here should be the queen h. So maybe let's call it h1. More concretely, now it's possible to use this definition for the total differentiability of f. This means the whole thing here gets simpler again. Okay, and then you should see the first part here is already of the form we want in the end. However, for the rest, we have to go back to our pink h, of course. Therefore, in the next step, we resubstitute our h1. So maybe we first do it for the derivative df, and then you see we have a plus sign here inside, which means we should use that df is a linear map. In other words, we can pull out the addition. Okay, after this, you should see now we have two parts that are already of the form we want for the linearization of the function f after g. More precisely, if this works like we want, then we see the derivative of the function f after g at this position here. And there you should see, this is indeed the composition of the other two derivatives. Hence, the only thing that remains to show is that this here is indeed the correct error function for the function f after g. Hence, here you just have to check that the limit of this new function fulfills the condition we have given in the definition of the total differentiability. More concretely, the function goes to zero when h goes to zero, even when we divide it by the Euclidean norm of h. Indeed, I think this is something you can check for yourself. Okay, but then after this, the proof is finished. Then there we find the derivative of the function f after g. Okay, so this is the chain rule and we will discuss examples for it in the next video. With this, I really hope that I see you there and have a nice day. Bye.